morning everyone and welcome to our backyard. Today I'd like to go over some of the standout blooming nectar flowers for the pollinators this October. So my name is Crystal and I garden in Zone 9 south of Houston along the Texas Gulf Coast. And I garden specifically for butterflies, hummingbirds, pollinators, native pollinators. And one of the things that I've come to realize is in my garden, it's important to have flowers that are nectar producers pretty much year round because we have pollinators pretty much year round. The only time we have a blip is when we have a really hard freeze. In the last three years during our winter, we did have a dip down and a hard freeze for a couple of days and then it goes back above freezing. So that does nip the plants if you don't protect them or take them in the garage. But in any case, I wanted to showcase some things in the fall that have been doing very well and the pollinators have been all over. So you can see that I am looking at my newest garden bed that I put in April. And there's a surprise in here for me. And then of course a couple of standouts. And so the surprise is this very large dwarf red porter weed. And this was supposed to get about 12 inches tall. And as I have mentioned in the past, when you're down along the Gulf Coast where it's hot and humid, we have such a long growing season and the conditions are just really conducive to many plants getting larger than their predicted sizes. So that's what I'm seeing here with this dwarf porterweed. I wanna get a little closer. If you watch my channel, you know that I am a huge fan of porterweed that is a member of the Verbena family. And I am going to put a link to a video up at the top that I did earlier this year on porterweed. I have multiple colors in the garden and I am, you know, it's a staple in my in my pollinator garden because of the nectar production. What's interesting is I've also found birds on these bloom spikes and they are eating the seeds. Little chickadees have been on these and eating the seeds from these porter weed. So this dwarf red porter weed is, does have a little bit different leaf structure to it. It's a little bit more full and this is the one that I've intentionally planted in the ground. I do have quite a few volunteers that have come up, but this is the one that I have intentionally planted in the ground. The rest I have in containers. And then the other thing I want to share is the beautiful Cardinal Climber vine that I have trellised. And this is the reason that we grow this. This has been blooming now for a couple of months and we will have hundreds of blooms on this vine. These are hummingbird and butterfly favorites. They will bloom probably for a good three months. They're the perfect flower for that proboscis of the larger butterfly to come down and get the nectar and also the hummingbird and its tongue. This happens to be a huge favorite and it's been blooming like this for two months and it will continue to bloom like this hopefully for another month. So for a good three months out of the year we have gorgeous blooms that are prolific and for the other part of the time in the summer, the foliage is beautiful. You can see the foliage is not 
as gorgeous anymore. It's not concentrating on the foliage. It's concentrating on the flower production. But it's fun to come out here and see all the blooms every day. And we have this planted in this what we call our center garden bed. And we also have it planted along our north fence. We have hummingbirds here daily. Another fall standout has been our lantana. And this has been visited time and time again, day after day after day, with both hummingbirds and butterflies. It's producing beautifully, and it's fun to look out and see the butterflies all over these plants. You know that I am a fan of lantana in the south here because it performs so long and so well. And this particular lantana is a sterile and mounding lantana. So it has a beautiful mounding habit rather than a sprawling vase-like habit. And it does not set seed. So it concentrates on producing flowers which are pollinator attractors. So you can see why a butterfly would like these mini flowers. But I see hummingbirds on this, which surprises me every time I see a hummingbird come down and visit the lantana. Another beautiful flower producer in the fall is a Texas native called Greg's Mist Flower. Not only do monarch butterflies really love this flower, we've got migrating monarchs right now coming through during the month of October, and they will stop and get nectar on these flowers. But it's a favorite of the queen butterfly, and queens are a little bit smaller than monarchs, and they're colored not I mean, you can tell them apart pretty easily, but the queen is so attracted to this because of a compound that the male queen butterfly needs for reproduction. And so this flower has been, this is a fall beauty in the garden. The only thing you have to be careful with is it will, it will, um, occupy your garden. So this is one plant and it is loving its life here in my south bed and it's somewhat taking over. So you have to just be a little bit aware. I don't mind because back in here I'm certainly not, I don't see it back here and this is totally for the pollinator. So it's kind of like, okay, that's interesting. This is winning. And I'm glad because, you know, native plants are just conducive for our conditions. And of course, it's a wonderful pollinator attractor. The next fall standout is my firebush. And I have to say, this is a standout even in the summer. When we freeze, this plant will freeze to the ground, but it does come up from the roots. And this is probably over seven feet tall right now. And it has been blooming all summer long, all fall. And it's just prolific. Fire, fire bush is just a wonderful plant to have in the pollinator garden not only for the flowers, but also for these berries that the birds eat. Let me come over here. This has some good berries that you can see that when they ripen, the birds are all over the firebush berries. I love having this bush in the yard <laughs> because it attracts so many different types of pollinators from native bees to honeybees to butterflies and also hummingbirds and then of course birds. 
So I purchased a hanging basket recently that has Swedish ivy in it. And Swedish ivy will flower about this time of year, which is also a pollinator attractor. And you can see these delicate little flowers are visited. I've also had Swedish ivy from prior years that I've kept. And this one is flowering in spite of me. You can see these beautiful little delicate flowers. And all I've done is water it. I need to fertilize it and I have it. But it survived the whole year. And so I'm really pleased with how this performs in the fall. As a note, my Mexican flame vine is flowering. It doesn't have flowers all over it like it does in the springtime. But I'm really happy to see it flowering again. And so are the butterflies. They're very happy seeing it flower. And finally, I want to share with you this gorgeous Salvia madrensis. Look at all these yellow blooms. The hummingbird is here all the time. She loves these flowers. There aren't many yellow flowering salvias, but Salvia madrensis is one. And the thing I love about this plant is when it starts to get its bloom spike, it just continues and it continues and continues and just grows and it keeps flowering. And so they have offshoots and they just get longer and keep producing the blooms. And so I've mentioned Salvia madrensis. This is the time in the fall. It starts flowering, oh, beginning of September and it will go until our frost if we have one. And so winter is when this shines. And I can't tell you how happy I am to have a salvia that shines like this through the fall and winter. This is a workhorse for me in the pollinator garden. Plus I really like this butter yellow color. It's interesting because there aren't hardly any salvias that are yellow. Hmm. Isn't that pretty? And they grow so tall. Hurricane Barrel that came through in July flattened this salvia, but it didn't break it. And so my husband created a lattice work of bamboo and this helped prop up the salvia and they've just grown gorgeously since. I'm in the back of, of this flower bed so you could see what this looked like and he did a crisscross of the bamboo stakes and so this has really helped us get the salvia up and grow up after it got flattened. Mm. It's going to start flowering. There's so many bloom spikes on on these salvia that I have back here. An honorable mention that I have is my salvia leucantha. I love the color of this. I love the purple. It's velvety in the white flowers. I typically have a lot of success. Salvia leucantha blooms a little bit in the spring and then it has its show in the fall. And I usually have a lot of Salvia leucantha. And unfortunately, this is one of the plants that got hurt severely by our hurricane. And so I do have some more that's coming up from the ground but it was it, it it took a toll so I don't have a lot of salvia leucantha this year unfortunately but what I do have 
the butterflies and hummingbirds do enjoy. So if you follow my channel, you know that I am a huge proponent of looking at what grows really well in your area and planting that for your pollinators, both nectar plants and host plants for butterflies, for your caterpillars. But it's really important to look at what grows during what seasons. And <laughs> sometimes I find that I'm a little heavy in one season, like spring and early summer, and then come up short in the fall. So I've been very intentional with my plantings to try to have very good coverage all year long. We have such a long growing season that unless we freeze, we have plants that grow for us year round. So if you haven't frozen yet, what are some of your beautiful producing plants at the moment? Along the Texas Gulf Coast, we have quite a few still. Well, thanks everyone for joining me. I really appreciate you coming along and visiting my channel. I hope you have a wonderful day today. And I hope to see you again soon.